I'd like to start with a story to put you in the shoes of a non-Japanese speaking person. So you're at a shoe store, you're looking for a size 6.5 and all you see are 23s and 25s. And suddenly a female employee comes up to you and asks, do you need something in English? You say, yes, you're looking for a 6.5 of this shoe. As the female employee brings you your 6.5, she asks you, where are you from? You answer to her, I'm from Peru. And then she replies, que bueno, si necesitas algo más, me avisas. Or you don't find your 6.5 you wanted, and you end up leaving the store disappointed. Which of these two stories are true? The answer is both of them. Have you ever experienced anything like this? Today, to solve this issue of the language barrier that exists and the lack of information in Japan, I, Kazuna Yamamoto, would like to introduce my web platform, Local Natives. Local Natives is an online platform where you can find the right service at the right time in the right language. Our service is used by two groups of people. First, they're non-Japanese speakers, whether they are tourists or residents, who have problems regarding the language barrier that exists here in Japan. And we also have these service industries that, have, that do have multilingual workers, but just not at the right time, or their stores are located in very foreigner-intensive locations. What is the problem here? To explain the problem, I would like to start with some logistics. According to the Ministry of Foreign of Tourism, there are about 30 million tourists that came to Japan in 2017, and an additional 2.5 million that currently live in Japan. In Japan, the number of tourists have been increasing over the past years, especially due to the Tokyo 2020, and for the new law that will change next April to have more foreign workers to be in Japan. But in reality, many of them have a problem due to the language barrier that currently exists. I conducted a simple survey, and 100% of the non-Japanese speaking population have had some problem regarding the language barrier. And looking at this graph, we are allowed to see that most of the people find trouble when they have to buy a train ticket, for example, or when they're in a city office or a bank, or maybe at the doctor. And Additionally, this is a message I personally got from my Belgian friend who had to pay 7,000 yen not knowing what she even had to pay for. And lastly, the initial story I started with is my experience working at Nike and the second story of the same customer that couldn't buy the shoe the time she came before because I wasn't there. So there goes on my solution, Local Natives, our online platform where we deliver efficient information depending on the language, location, and type of service you need. And so the question is, how does this work? So let me show you. First of all, you go to your web browser, Firefox, and type in localnatives.co. And then as you can tell, you're looking for a service. Maybe you need to look for a supermarket, let's say. You put in supermarket, Musashi Sakai, there's a lot of universities there. And then you're looking for an English speaker. Maybe I'll go shopping on a Wednesday. And then, voila. This is the type of information you can get. You get the information based on how close it's geographically located from the station, what time they have an English speaker or whatever multilingual speaker you need. And if you click on the page, you'll get more information about different languages and different, da and different dates. So I called 50 hospitals, gyms, and supermarkets around Musashi Sakai area because that's an area where there are a lot of universities and foreign students and foreign expats. And about 10% of, 10 of them actually replied that they do actually have English speakers or English workers, even Korean, Chinese, and French speaking workers. Even in the Nike I worked at, we had an English speaker, Chinese, Spanish, and Korean. But did anyone know? No. Did you know I speak Spanish? Probably not. So here's my business model. Service industries that require high interaction between the customer and worker can list their information based on the subscription model starting from 5,000 yen per month, with additional fees for services such as multilingual online menus or reservations. And for users, it's a non-Japanese speaker, it's for non-Japanese speaker, it's all free. You make an account, look at the online menus, and make reservations in the language you prefer. We do have competitors, but they only focus on the food industry. Therefore, our primary target isn't restaurants. 
We want to create an ecosystem, a win-win situation for both industries and users so that Japan can be ready for the globalized future we are headed to. Thank you. Great job, Kazuna. Uh, you spoke clearly and slowly, so. Thank that was you. <laughs> um, so, I think this is a great idea, but have you considered what your user acquisition cost is? You, like, for like users? Yeah, yeah. so um, especially in a web platform when you're starting out, how are you trying to market it so actually people use it? How do you gather your so users? Initially, um, a lot of my surroundings like are all foreigners, but I'm also into. I use a lot of Facebook marketing, on basically web marketing. I pro I would utilize all the Facebook and the social media that currently exists, so that I can reach out to different groups of people to get users to subscribe to our um, ch website. Okay. Um. Uh, so, is there some kind of like basically every user uh, you get, is there kind of a cost performance that you've calculated, or is that something? That I haven't looked at yet. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sounds good. Hi. My question is with regards for um, the companies who would sign up and pay the subscription model. How would they know that their return on investment? So initially, I would start with the um, free trial period so that it would be easier for them to get in. And so that that would allow them to see how many people they actually um, acquired. I'm making um, all the users that are non-Japanese have to register so that they, we can give them data on how many people actually clicked on the website through our platform. So that we can give them data and how much more new, um, new markets they are able to reach because of the new the technology we are providing and the data they have. It's close to that question, but the operation was a little bit questionable. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people working, and how do you really collect those data for, like, when they are, the shift change all the time. So you have to update all the time, and some people feel it's very, very hard to do that. So the initial idea is to work with places with full-time workers, basically, so that the input of information is easier. But then gradually, we are actually trying to integrate with other shift services or create our own so that we can integrate the APIs, encrypt all the specific data so that it won't be outputted on the information, just to get specific information on part-time workers when they are working when. And, and one more thing was about Google Translation. Mm -hmm. I was in Vietnam right now um, one week ago, and I can do any communication I want to with only Google Translation. So I know it's not perfect yet, mm -hmm. but the technology is coming. How are you going to beat with Google Translation? That would be the focus on the actual service-based technology, because although, yes, there are translation services, for example, going to a doctor or something, sometimes you just need that connection or that communication. I'm s focusing more on that market rather than, for example, restaurants where you can point or you can use any translation material. Um, it's kind of a similar question, but I know there are several competitors like, such as Oura or like Japanese uh, a translation service on the phone. Like we make a phone call and we can pay, like customer can pay like, you know, a little bit more expensive cost. How do you, how to say, compete or like how, do you have any strategy to beat? First of all, the competitive advantage we have is that our website is clearly much more cheaper than other existing websites, such as Gurunabi, Hot Pepper, Yelp, and that kind of gives it a motive for people to be able to use it. And so, in reality, a lot of people still actually want that human interaction rather than relying on a phone call. For example, there were situations, one of the situations I encountered was there was a woman in labor and the only way she would be able to do it was through a phone call, but some places don't accept a phone call either. That's kind of the situation. Or even people, I called a bunch of doctors and they would say, oh, if you can't speak Japanese, please don't come, even if there's a translation device. So that's kind of the traditional place that I think exists in Japan, that people don't want to accept that, so it kind of helps. Thank you.